Lawyer Nat and finance guy Steve arrive home from New York three years ago. Tired of the corporate life, they escape the cubicle and start a trendy cold-pressed juice business. Two years in, and they're turning over $1 million and living the dream. Join me as I separate fact from Pulp Fiction. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. A successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, but you, so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Big show today, Steve and Natalie Warner. They own the Green Street Juice Company and it's one of those trendy, you know, cold pressed juice companies. But they've got just a very, very inspirational business story. So stay tuned for that. I help listener and forum member Christian start what he calls a huge video marketing strategy. And I share thoughts around how to create remarkable services. Today's show made possible by Web Central. They're beautifully simple website design solutions. I think you're going to love. Check them out over at webcentral.com.au. And we're also made possible by Aussie-owned and operated Design Crowd, who give you a perfect custom design every time. Guaranteed. You can grab your free VIP listener discount over at designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. So coming up, we catch up with a couple of high-flying cubicle escapees, you know I love a cubicle escapee, who are now living the dream. Not so much living the La Vida Loca, but they are loving what they're doing and they're building a wonderful business. Having never run their own business before, in the space of just three years, they've created a great-looking brand, a tasty product in the most part. The green juice is a bit hard work, more on that later, and they absolutely love what they do. But first, time for a quick check-in. Big news. Well, it was big news for me. If you fly Virgin Australia and you like listening to this show, then those two things are going to come together because starting in August, they are going to be airing episodes of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, 35,000 feet in the air. How good is that? So uh, yeah, two episodes go up in August and more will be added each month. So look out for that. And hey, by the way, if you wanted to, like if you just wanted to do the show a favour and pay it forward, why don't you tweet at Virgin Australia telling them how excited you are that this show will shortly be available in flight. I'd love you to do that. I'm blogging a little bit more, which I'm finding quite cathartic and useful, helpful, as I say. There's a couple of blogs over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com at the moment. Four easy steps to making an ebook, because I know a lot of you want to start publishing and nine ways to boost your website search relevancy. So you can check them out in my blog. Heading off to the Philippines this Sunday for a week with a bunch of listeners on the annual Creating Freedom Through Outsourcing Tour. Looking forward to that. That'll be the second one. I'll report back with a few new findings and insights into this new flat world economy. Don't worry about that. And probably ruffle a few feathers along the way. One last check-in. I um, I had a great day a couple of days ago. Listener Steve Keel from the Laser Group seated me. Yeah, he gave me something. He invited me, he actually invited me on a race day. A couple of very fast laps in a Porsche racing car that he sponsors. Now, I've been a little bit sceptical about this whole sponsoring racing car thing. Like, how does that get you more customers? So I went in with that kind of marketing mindset and also very excited about going in a very fast car. We got up to 240 kilometers an hour. Don't reckon I was shooting myself. But I documented the whole day with a series of interviews from the racing car driver, who was quite a famous one, not that I would know to Steve, to the guests that he invited, and kind of formed a, an opinion around this whole racing car sponsorship thing. So look out for that in uh, an upcoming episode. Right, team, that's enough of a check-in. Around the corner, Nat and Steve from Green Street Juice Company with their inspirational story. But before that, here's a word from a wonderful sponsor. 
The Small Business Big Marketing Show is grateful for the support of Aussie-owned business, designcrowd.com, the world's number one custom-designed marketplace where it's beautifully simple and cheap, I love cheap, to get a design you love guaranteed. I asked founder Alec Lynch what problems Design Crowd solved for us small business owners. Buying design has traditionally been an expensive process, a slow process, and a risky process. Design Crowd's crowdsourcing solution fixes those problems. Designcrowd.com, a faster, cheaper, more creative way to get a custom logo, graphic, or print design for your business. For a special VIP offer that can save you up to $100 on your first design, visit designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. So, Nat and Steve Warner, owners of the Green Street Juice Company, one of those trendy new cold-pressed juice shops, right, that are popping up all around the place. I don't know about you, but as the father of three teenagers, I happen to be seeing them a lot. Now, up until 2013, they were living the high life in New York City. Nat was a lawyer. Well, still is a lawyer, but she's not practicing. Steve, a finance guy. They moved back home to Melbourne, and whilst not earning as much just yet are now living their dream of running their own business. And I think you're going to hear it in their voices, the way they talk about this wonderful new business that they launched a couple of years ago. I was very excited about this interview, not only because I love speaking to new business owners, especially those who've not done it before and that have escaped the corporate cubicle, but I'm incredibly curious about this whole cold-pressed juice category that has seemed to popped up out of nowhere. You know, what are they? Why are they good for you? How do you differentiate yourself when you own one from all the other cold-pressed juice businesses that seem to be popping up? (laughs) But most importantly, how the hell do they make money? My son and I, we play this game when we're in the car. It's called, how does that business make money? Right? So the way the game works is that we're driving along and Jack will go, hey, dad, see that business over there? How does it make money? And sometimes I can answer it, and sometimes I, ca- I can't. So my question to you is, how do you make money? Obviously, the, the, the objective, and it's why we're all um, working together, but for us, the, if, you're a, if you're a business like ours, and we're a juice company, uh, and if you're with one retail store, and if you rely on uh, people off the street coming in to buy one or two juices at a time, then you won't make money. For us, it's about cleansing and people buying one or three or five or seven day cleansers um, where they substitute food for for our juices um, and have a health focus uh, and they buy um, buy juices in bulk aha uh-huh. mm. and, and that me- and for us that means that we can uh, make them in in bigger batches we make them at the same time we have a cust- one customer who who might buy 24 or, or 32 or you know even 56 juices oh nice yeah mm. ka-ching <laughs> and, and that's and and obviously the pricing structure reflects you know people buying more, um, but essentially for us that's where we're focused. It's the cleanse market, people wanting to detox their their internals and and feel good on the inside. Now I get it. See, I couldn't have said that to Jack when I was in the car mm. because I went into your beautiful store this morning, had a look around, and I'm seeing some beautiful product on the shelf, but not a lot of it. But now that you talk about that, I love that business model. Like it's almost like a, it's like a phone company's plan, yeah, or a gym membership. Well, we built that store and we put a lot of effort in and invested in that store. I can tell. It's a flagship store uh, and it's there to personalize our brand so Mm. that customers can come in, they can talk to someone who knows what they're talking about, who can help them out. They can find out all they need to find out about a cleanse and they have a good experience. They feel good in the store. They're well looked after. And so it's a showcase. We're not a retail chain with 20 stores or 50 stores, and that's not our business model. Not yet. (laughs) Not yet. But we do do want that store to be able to personalize the brand so people get a a feel for our our business. I want to break down your marketing later because there's a lot of aspects to it, including, you know, the store and the customer experience. So let's come back to that. But Nat, what is... A cold press juice. <laughs> Please help me here. Hey? So, um, 49 year old bloke, <laughs> hey? not up with the times. Well, this is the other thing that leads into how we make money and what's so beautiful about our business. We specialize in what we do. So a cold pressed juice is actually a particular technique that you use to extract the maximum nutrients and benefits from the produce. So there's two main ways in which to make the juice. One is your typical, what they call a centrifugal 
Pellets um, juicer that looks a bit like a blender and yep. whizzes things around. Yep. Got one. Yep. A lot of, um, you know, showcases in a lot of people's homes. Yep. What we do, and um, it's the best technology that you can get in juicing today, is we put the produce through a hydraulic press. So there's no heat introduced into that process. And what Because heat kills nutrition? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's right. So you're left with the maximum amount yep. of nutrients that are available. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. That's cold press juice. That's cold press juicing. Exactly. It's a it's a technique of juicing that's the best that's available to make sure that when you're consuming the product, yeah. you're getting the best out of the produce. I and love it. I just add that we take that one step further by making sure that all of our ingredients are 100% organic. Mm-hmm. And particularly when you're cleansing, that's the most important aspect because you want to introduce a very clean product in yeah, right. to give the body a break from the overload of pesticides and things now, like that. Have you had a cleanse recently? Because you look, you look very healthy. <laughs> hey? Actually. Steve, you, you are too. Yeah, I did, I did we, our 14-day man, healthy man. Whoa. Yeah. 14 days of juice. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, and I'm I'm off the back of a seven day juice cleanse myself. So wonderful thing about that is it just unlocks a whole lot of energy. You yeah, start right. to glow from the inside out. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to people? Like, actually, let me cut to the chase here because so much I want to cover with you guys. I mean, <laughs> leaving New York, leaving high pain, all that stuff. I'll yep. come to it. But you're talking about the juice. We may as well stay there. One of my listeners, I put out to the fact that I am talking to you guys and these fancy cold press juice owners, this fancy cold press juice business because. It's pretty new to Australia. Mm. One of the listeners, he's a bit of a naysayer, don't know him, but <laughs> how do you respond to this? He says, it seems to me juice will in the future be considered the new tobacco. Oh, hello. Ooh, how are you going to address, yeah, it is. How are you going to address the proven health issues associated with high fructose consumption of juices? Is there more sugar, as there is more sugar in a glass of juice than a glass of Coke, which I, I don't know, is that true or not? Mm. But what do you say to people like that? Because you, you would have heard that before, yeah? Absolutely. And it's becoming more and more common. That kind of like negativity. Absolutely. And the sugar debate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The sugar issue. Have you seen that sugar film? Yes, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful film. How good is that? (laughs) I've got to get him in. Yeah. You should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Haven't had a mountain juice since. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I haven't had an iced tea. Yeah. Uh, I was sucked into the fact that, well, iced teas must be (laughs) healthy. It's got more sugar than Coke. (laughs) Anyway, back to you, Absolutely. So a few things there. The first thing that we would say is that not all juice is created equal. Uh So our, the juice that we produce is all nutritionally balanced, very low in sugar to begin with. Ours is mainly vegetable based juice. Right. And it's fresh, organic. So it only has a shelf life of three to four days on it. So it hasn't been through a process of heating, which will kill most of the nutrients yep. and you're left with essentially sugary water. Yeah, 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 um, right. What we do is it's, it's low in fructose to begin with, but also when you look at our product, you look at it as a whole. So with the small amount of natural sugar that you'll get, even in vegetables, you're also getting an abundance of micronutrients that you can only get through your fruits and vegetables uh, and colors. Nat, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with you because uh, whatever you just said, I believe, and it sounds good. And in fact, I've got some here to try, which I'll do later. They look absolutely beautiful. Let's go back to the start, or at least the Mm -hmm. start of Green Street Juice Company, right? Yeah. Because from what I understand, pre-2013, you're living the high life in New York, right? Bit of Soho action, Mm. you know, Steve's a, he's an investment, you're the, uh, you're the legal eagle. Mm -hmm. And um, at some point you've had an aha moment, clearly. Tell us about that. This is my favorite bit to tell about our journey because really Green Street feels incredibly fate driven Uh and layered with levels of synchronicity for us. And it's our personal journey. Mm -hmm. So the name Green Street comes from living in Green Street in New York, in Soho. Mm -hmm. And New York was- Pretty funky, Steve, was it? It's it's an awesome spot. Great spot. Very arty district. Did you um, wear the beret and kind of the yeah, scarf? In winter, I had yeah, all I'd sorts of stuff. I'd be wearing it summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Green Street was incredibly life-changing for us and we could never have imagined that. So we went across because of an opportunity, a job opportunity that was presented to Steve as a Conman opportunity. 
but wow. As a con man? Uh, it's a condiment. <laughs> oh, it's a condiment, I was going to say. <laughs> I must articulate myself. I'm being interviewed here. <laughs> so Steve got the big break. Mm, that's right. The big corporate break in the city of dreams. Yep. But for us, it essentially meant that New York really opened up our eyes to a whole new way of living. And in New York, they work hard, but they play hard. Mm -hmm. And they are really at the forefront of a number of industries and, and health is one one of them. And we discovered these beautiful cold pressed organic juices, which at the time weren't readily available in Australia at mm -hmm. all. We hadn't seen anything like it. And it became a staple in our lifestyle and our diet. So it started to shape the way that we you know, lived our lives and we were experiencing some wonderful benefits from this. And for me personally, New York was a journey where I turned from lawyer to yoga teacher trainer. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've, I've just, I had a previous guest a few months ago. This guy wasn't a lawyer, but he, he made a lot of dough from a Buffalo chicken wing franchise, right? In the States. <laughs> and he was also a yogi. Wow. Right? And he's gone and started a business. And that's why I got him on the show. Mm -hmm. he, I started, he started a business called The Cuddlest. And now he sells cuddles. <laughs> I love that. Do you? Yes. <laughs> he's, he's teaches. Anyway, I digress. Is, this, oh, that, is he still in, where is he's he? He's in New York. He's, yeah, yeah, of course, only in New so York. So 51% of people in New York uh, live by themselves. And he says, you know, we're sex obsessed, but touch deprived. <laughs> wow. Right? So now he trains others to, anyway, I digress. But here we go. Another, yeah. I, you know what I call you guys, your cubicle escapees. You've escaped, <laughs> you've escaped the cubicle, right? Yeah. Right. So All anyway, so for it. <laughs> you've had this moment where mm. you've, cause I, I just find it fascinating that I sort of do and I sort of, I completely get what you've done, living, leaving this well-paid existence behind for something that's touched your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And it made a significant impact in our lives. Yeah. And I think in addition to becoming a, Nat did, as a lawyer there, if you want to practice law, you have to sit the bar exam. That was going to be uh, a, a big effort, not something Nat wanted to do. She did yoga teacher training, but she also studied nutrition. And that's where the passion for, for mm -hmm. making juices came from mm -hmm. and the understanding to be able to craft the blends that we have. Yeah, right. So that's the other part of it. And then it wasn't until we got back to Australia, or, or the, the idea was born while we were living in Green Street. That's why we called the company Green Street. Yeah. Um, and, Sounds like something and the planning, Sesame Street to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, then the, the, and then we're in the planning stage to uh, open our own cold press juice business back in Melbourne before we left. Yeah. H had you finished, Steve, your time as a whatever you were doing in finance? No, no. I hadn't. So okay, so we, a hard decision here. No, the decision was made for us, and this is oh, partly so. why Nat said it's fate driven. <laughs> the uh, I was working for a, an Australian gold mining company. The gold price fell three hundred dollars overnight. Uh, uh. The company went into major cost-cutting mode, shut down offices in, in Brisbane. Say fate. Very difficult to justify Very fate having driven. an office in New York with one person yep. in, it when, in that environment. So I was brought home. And nice. The universe to, has just tapped you on the shoulder. said, you back, back home, team. Yeah. And it's interesting because, and it was do the same job back here. And then from then on, I did that for a while mm -hmm. uh, and then then left and joined Green Street full time. And, and it sounds like Nat was on such a roll with your whole, you'd found your juice shop in Soho, which clearly you're, you know, mm. here comes Nat again. <laughs> hey, we love Nat. <laughs> Cleansing every other day. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you've started your yogi journey. You'd mm. found a new kind of thing and that was your kind of like, yeah, we're going to go back to Australia, but we're not going back to this gold place. We're going to go and start a juice company. And that's what you came back to do, yeah? Well, it was interesting. It wasn't until we got back to Melbourne that we realised what we were easily accessing in New York uh -huh. wasn't readily available here. So, and through the studies that I had done in the States, mm -hmm. there were some key components for product integrity. So glass packaging, 100% organic ingredients and something that is sort of locally made. And at the time we couldn't find that and thought, well, we were able to get it over there, it should be readily available this is, this here. This 2013, yeah? 2012, 2013. Gosh, End of 2013. Mm. End of 2013. Mm -hmm. And that stuff wasn't existing. Um, Didn't exist. That, yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah. Goodness and, me. Had you and if, two, we, if we hadn't have come back at that time, we probably would have missed the boat. This yeah. is where wow. fate, this is where fate you so know, you're one of the first? stepped in. One of the, certainly the first... 100% organic juice bar in, in Australia or Melbourne. In Melbourne. Yep. yep. And one of the first 
cold-pressed juice companies nice. in Australia. Mm. Nice. Which is why, you know, a very quick snippet of the, the journey, we returned back to Australia in late 2013. We launched the company in March 2014 hmm. and opened our flagship store in September 2014. It was a very quick Ride. Well, let's talk about that ride because um, I'm going to guess neither of you had ever had your own business previously, right? You'd you'd been the you know in in the cubicle, living the high life, you know, corporate <laughs> Spencer accounts. Say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, we'll go to that restaurant. It's much, it's got much better wine lease. <laughs> Wouldn't be doing that anymore. Uh, so you haven't got any business, uh, small business experience. I love this. Mm. I just so love this. So how does one open uh, a cold pressed juice company? Yeah, it's really interesting and we've learned so much along the way coming from that background. But we it was a rush, as Nat said. We we apply we're encouraged to apply to be the juice provider at a yoga festival in Melbourne, uh, called Wonderlust in, in March twenty fourteen. <laughs> Ah, the old wonderlust, hey? <laughs> Not a festival I'm familiar with. However, clearly one that was an appropriate place for Nat and Steve to test their idea. Before we find out how that went, check this out. Support for this show comes from Web Central, who are pretty damn good at driving traffic and leads your way. Verity Ma, their marketing head honcho, recently drew an interesting analogy for what a website without traffic is like. Your website is a billboard in the desert if you don't have any traffic coming to it. So similar to having an advertisement out in the Sahara Desert, if you don't have any um, traffic driving past it, then people aren't going to know anything about your business. It's a bit of a waste of time. So yes, it's important and a first step is to get that billboard, which is your website. But past that, you need to actually get found and then from getting found, get leads into your business. So you need to get traffic or cars driving past your website to actually know what you do, what your business offers and how you're different to your competitors because your competitors are out there getting traffic to their websites. Hmm. <laughs> do camels count as traffic? Web Central, helping your website get found fast. Visit webcentral.com.au for exclusive listener offers. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. And now let's get back to Nat and Steve and all things Wonderlust. We were accepted. To be accepted, you had to have a website. We didn't have one. You had to have. You had to show your, your sort of business history. We didn't really have one. Um, so we, we got a company to pull together this web page for us. Yeah. We got our juicer into a kitchen. It all came. We it all came together extremely quickly. But we were learning as we went. And and interesting time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, so, so was that the start of you producing cold pressed juice? It was the first time at Wonderlast you had the opportunity to say, "Hey." Buy. You this can is, buy this. This is us. Welcome to Green Street. <laughs> what would you have? Like a caravan or a stall? Was it like a um We we had a little marquee, a marquee. that we set up. We can had you remember our the first sale. Uh Ish. What I what I we'll get to that. What I do remember is we came back from New York, there was someone living in our house, our tenants. We had to wait for them to finish the lease. We moved into the Cullen Hotel in Paran in a little tiny one bedroom studio, which would have been the size of this room. Mm. And we bought our two little small domestic juices and Nat was in there in that studio buying ingredients from the brand market, crafting these blends, no. um, mixing them, taste testing them. And can you, so is that cold pressing? Like, is that a portable cold press? You can buy a cold press machine, can you? Like a yeah. Breville or something, can you? That's right. right. Okay, like small domestic machines. Okay. Yeah. We can hook so you up with some the, good tips. Cool. On thank there. you. <laughs> hey, I need it. I need to lose this extra five kilograms. It just won't go away. Um, and so you're doing it out of the cullen. You're racing them off to Wonderlast. Uh, we were product creating out of the cullen when it came time to- um, testing. Yep. So the initial range we created in the cullen in a studio apartment, and Beautiful. they know that they live quite clo- we live yeah, yeah. quite close to it. And we, that's one know, of those art hotels, isn't it? That's yep. right, yeah, the okay. art series. Yeah. Yep. But the first time that we produced for the launch in Wonderlust, we were working out of a shared commercial kitchen space. But it was, <laughs> will, am I allowed to admit this now? <laughs> I'm looking, looking to Steve uh, for approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one's listening. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so when we when we launched at the Wonderlust Festival was the first time we had produced en masse for the public. <laughs> Love it. Testing well, out our big commercial juicer for the yeah, first time. For the first yeah. time, we ordered this beautiful big commercial juicer from New York and the first time we used it in proper action beautiful. was preparing for an audience of between 800 to 1,000 people. <laughs> How'd we it made, go? We made 500 juices. It yeah. took us a day and a half to make them. <laughs> yeah. And so we'd, we'd do that in about half a day now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was great. It the, was wonderful. The response was enough at that festival. We sold almost all of them. We gave away probably the last 50. But it was proof of concept for us. Yep. Uh, we had an amazing feedback saying, when are you opening a store? Where are you going to open? And we said, and we asked a lot of those people, where do you think we should open our first store? A lot of them said Paran. Yeah, um, mm. Monkey Paran. Well, for overseas listeners, for listen, not in, in Melbourne, Paran is a sort of like, I guess almost like the Soho of um, of, mm. of Melbourne. That's... Proof of concept's an interesting thing because many of us, and I've been guilty of this, don't listen to that. You know, you can do something and someone will go, that's unreal. And you just go, well, thanks. And then you go and do something else, right? Mm. But you listen to that, yeah? You kind of go on, okay, we don't need to be, nothing more we need to know. Let's do it. Let's go and lease some space, yeah. shop fit out. Branding. Well, we had planned to open in Paran, but coincidentally, because it was close by, we 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 thought it was a lot. Of, most number of yoga studios in Melbourne per yeah. square meter. Yeah, um, big yogi's base. big on the mm. cold press. They love yeah. it. It's our part of our life. It, it's the look, isn't it? It's the, <laughs> it's the yoga mat over the shoulder. I was talking to my daughter last night, saying I'm going to speak to you guys. Steph's 16, and she goes, "Oh yeah, yeah." Like, and it's the classic Instagram cold press shot. Your, your bare feet with a cold juice <laughs> bottle, eh? I hate to admit it, but it's true. Have you done it, hey, have you done it Nat? We've all done it. Uh, well, I haven't. I've got shocking toes, but... Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah. So September, I'm, I'm not trying to do a timeline here, but six months later, after Wonderlust, you open your flagship store. Still mm. like your only store, correct? Yeah. Green That's Street right. Juice opens mm-hmm. up in Paran, opposite the Pram Market. Fantastic location. Steve, when I spoke to you the other day, you said there would be a hundred things that you would do differently if you were opening today. Really? Uh, not with the store specifically. Did you get it we, that we wrong? The store. No, they're, they're things that the general public probably wouldn't notice. But but to us, yeah, there, there's you learn a lot. And we started off with a, a vision and went down the path and sort of we know what we wanted to do, but how to get there, we sort of you sort of meander through and you change your mind on different things. A lot of the things that we would do differently are around timing. Right. With, with the benefit of hindsight, yep. we would have a shopping cart to our website earlier than we did. Mm. We would because people were wanting to buy online. Yeah, because for us it's about that. Mentioned the short shelf life, and that's the thing that our customers love about our juice is the fact that it's so fresh. But it's logistically very challenging from a business operation viewpoint, mm. having a product that only lasts that long, yeah. um, and trying to get it out there to to the market. So yep. we can cater very well for Paran around our store, and online we can take orders and distribute. But it's a challenge and. Uh, having that online presence earlier probably would have been beneficial mm-hmm. for us. Another one with the store, probably building more flexibility into the store layout because. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking his I've first just sip. A, I just had a go. I was a bit parched. <laughs> He's had a go at the Empire State. <laughs> sorry, I had to, sorry to interrupt you as you're on a roll, but that, is it the Empire State? Mm. Mm. So a little bit of carrot, a bit of orange in there. No orange. No orange. No, it's just orange colour. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> wow. Yeah. Carrot, green apple, and um, how do I look after that? Yeah, you look You're glowing. Yeah, I thought, I thought so. <laughs> it's immunity, radiating with immunity health. Boosting that one. <laughs> Immun- yeah, I need that going need into winter. Need daylight today. Yep, I do. <laughs> you, were saying, you were saying, Steve, just the store layout and flexibility. Mm-hmm. I think we had a we had a vision about what we wanted to create in the store and how we saw it working. In hindsight, we probably would have incorporated a, a smoothie bar in there or space for a smoothie bar as oh. well. And just things that you learn along the way. And Can you, and you can still do that? We can. It's quite some space in that store. Mm. Requires Which a bit is, of retrofitting, but we, we could Yeah, do yeah. Mm. Space is groovy though. You know, you don't want to fill it up. Yeah. It's like the client that wants the bigger logo. Make the logo bigger. No, no, it doesn't need to be bigger. It still <laughs> yeah. works like that. It's about <laughs> experience and the feel. That yeah. store is, we won an international design award for Get that out. store. Yeah. So we were Did awarded. Did you get a bit emotional? Oh, no. It's <laughs> happy, happy. Can't expect it. <laughs> no, happy, very happy. But it was awarded 2015 Retail Store of the Year at an award ceremony in London. 
really? Yeah, the retail uh, week. Your shop awards. fitter kind of entered that, or how did that come about? Yeah, yeah. It's an award. Work. It's an award that the architects are very proud of, and so our architect did enter that. But but enormous competition. It's a global thing. Mm. Um, Up against the Hadid family for um, someone's. They're on that comedy show, aren't they? The Habib. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, Gigi. <laughs> right. Gigi, Tell you? me, hundred things you do wrong. Just going back to that. What about okay? So hundred things you get you, you do differently. Not wrong. You do differently. Mm. Was there a moment? It sounds just like talk about wonderlust. It's like a wonderlust journey from mm. you know a dream journey. Not all small business journeys are like that. Did they ever get the wobbles at some point? Oh, I think. Um, Did you look at each other and go, oh, uh, "Darling, uh, I'm just going back to uh, New York to uh, that gold company. It was quite good." <laughs> it, it's interesting, actually, because we we think back and and laugh a lot about our corporate life, um, <laughs> and you th- and you think back and and look at what you miss and the financial risk that you take and the financial security that you don't have in starting a small business is obviously something that plays on your mind a bit. But never have we doubted whether we did the right thing. We look at the financials and think, you know, what do we need to, how sustainable is this? And as you're growing, there's times when you sort of think, you know, we're not paying ourselves. Are we really going to be able to make the living that we want to and create the lifestyle that we want to create? And that was really the drive, Mm -hmm. one of the drivers. So you sort of question that. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge for us, honestly, has been relationship wise, working together as husband and wife in a small business because... It's 24-7. Yep. There is always something to do. Small businesses are invariably mm. under-resourced, and so you find yourself just doing what needs to be done. And yep. it, it can take over your life if you don't create boundaries for your work and non-work time. That's That was the biggest change. So how do you that do that? That's adjustment. hard. How do you create, how do you establish those boundaries? Oh, I'm not sure we've been able to do right. it yet. Still, yeah. still yeah. learning. Early days. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I think the thing that- Who gets the shits more, Nat or Steve? Hey. <laughs> eh? Uh, Not at Steve, I think. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably pretty fair. (laughs) It's always the husband's fault, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, hey, welcome to my world. (laughs) I think the thing with the journey so far, and we have had a truly blessed journey so far and have been grateful every step of the way. There's been a couple of elements that have collided for us, and I think it's universal for all businesses, or if you can get that combination right, it helps propel you and keep going through the challenges. And that's a real passion and a belief in what you're doing. If you have that greater vision and you really feel that you're making a difference with what you're bringing to the market on those days where you're pulling a 22 hour day and you may have been juicing and then you're, you know, delivering the juice yourself. Like at the early days, we were everything. We were the juicers, we were the customer service, we were the delivery drivers. Um, Tapping into the passion and what you believe in gets you through. Hallelujah. Mm. I had Michael Klim, Olympian swimmer, Michael Klim on the show about three years ago. And Mm -hmm. in fact, more, he started Milk, which is a clever, it's Klim spelled backwards, a, a skincare brand. He too, as he, you know, he, he was in the delivery truck delivering to David Jones and Myers and little pharmacies. And he yeah. too talked about the idea that he just believed so much in this skincare product, which wasn't available. There was nothing else for men at the time that it kept him going. And yeah. I hear this, it's, it's your why. It's why do you do what you do? And my listeners hear me bang on about it all the time. But if you don't know what it is, then you kind of quickly can lose faith. Mm. Uh, It's so important because it is an incredible challenge, especially in the early days. And if you don't have a why, you'll probably give up. (laughs) I reckon that is just great advice right Mm. there. I'm loving this juice, by the way. Absolutely loving it. Hey, um, can you wrap some... I want to talk marketing in a minute, but just wrap some numbers around where you're at. Share as much as you want. As I said, no one listening. I'm just (laughs) personally interested. (laughs) Yeah, we're at a, um, throughout, we've got a commercial kitchen in Port Melbourne and one store, and we sell through some wholesale stockers and to some cafes. And uh, sell in, online. In and sell online, but still pretty much Melbourne metropolitan is our geographic market. And so that operation, we're doing, in terms of revenue, we're doing a, a rate about a million dollars a year. We produce about 120,000 bottles a year. So about 10,000 bottles a month mm-hmm. is where we're at. We've got about five full-time staff. Is that hard? 
Yeah. yeah. And, and, <laughs> and breathe, fun. Breathe. And fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun and, smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I hear a lot about staff and oh, small business. I'd love to talk about that when, when you yeah. <laughs> well, later. It's, it's, yeah. There's great lessons along the way, but when you get the right people, it's so rewarding. How do you get the right people? Have you got a right person? Oh, my gosh. We've got many right people. We've got a fabulous team. Oh, my really, gosh. Really how? I th- uh, the passion, recruiting for. Yeah, but how have you found this? Oh, how? Five? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> They've sometimes, found us. sometimes not that, through traditional methods. Mostly not through traditional. I love not traditional recruitment methods. Hold that thought, mm-hmm. Matt, because Steve, what you said, uh, they found you. I spoke to the fellow who brought Virgin Blue, which is now Virgin Australia, to Australia many, many years ago. Uh, he said he never had to run an ad, an employment ad, a recruitment ad, because the brand was so strong. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, okay, that's Virgin. I get that. But you, here you are, a little yeah. Melbourne-based juice company. You create a strong-looking brand, a cool brand, beautiful packaging, beautiful uh, intent. Yeah. And they will. They will come. It's like, a, it's like fl- moths to a flame. Mm. Mm. And I, and Love I think it. So true. The best example is our store ma- our current store manager of Paran, who, who was away today when you were in there. But she and Nat met each other standing in a queue buying tickets for some event and got talking and right. just hit it off. And is, this, is this the non-traditional way, is Nat? Yes, that's right. right. And it was a beautiful like-minded event um, in Melbourne. And I'd met her one other time where I had presented to a group of yoga teacher trainees about you know my journey and mm-hmm. the, way in we, the way in which we infuse yoga principles into our, our making. So I'd met her briefly then, and then I ran into her again at this you know beautiful like-minded event. We got talking. And she's now our store manager Beautiful. and she's perfect. And we have a few other examples like that. And I totally agree that we haven't had to do a traditional marketing campaign. Well, you're yeah. doing some interesting marketing. Let's talk about that in a minute. Those numbers you wrapped around, Steve, you happy with them? Yeah, um, we're very happy you with should where be. What are we, at. second full year? Uh, second full year about hmm. to finish, yeah. yeah. And it's um, a million bucks a year. Yeah. And that's good, good margin. No, the margin... That's a challenge. Right. <laughs> it, it probably costs half a million bucks to make them. Uh, and- see, that's interesting because as a dad, father of three teenagers, the price of cold-pressed juice is not my friend, mm. right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to the guys, get back to the local deli and just get a $4 squeezed orange juice. <laughs> yeah. We'll change that after we've talked to you. <laughs> and that's why our so products are a bit boutique and that's why they'll never be in supermarket chains. I well, um, don't say never. That's oh, right. Never unlikely. say never, Correct. Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> unlikely. Right. But, um, but yeah, they are expensive to make because cold pressed is a slow process. It's manually intensive. Now I get it. So you, so you need scale. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I just thought you were ripping us off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the other thing to say probably about numbers and what we're really happy about is the growth that we've seen. I'm not sure if this is a correct term, like year on year. Come on, Nat, you're um, a lawyer. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> and I'm looking at Steve because <laughs> numbers is his strength, right. really. Working one of the one of the great things about working together is we have very complementary strengths and yeah. weaknesses. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah. But the growth that we have experienced when you look at this time last year to what we're doing this year mm-hmm. is incredibly positive. Okay. So it's it's about, to about 80% to revenue growth year on year. But the, mm. the most pleasing thing for us is the thing we monitor is repeat cleansers. So people who have done a, a detox cleanse Junkies. with us. And <laughs> I mean that in the most loving way, by the way. Not I've either. never heard that before <laughs> juice in junkies. the context of juice. <laughs> we'll call them junkies, see if they still remain customers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because that, that is proof that our products are where we want them to be. And people have... We get people who say, I've tried different juice cleansers and different juices. And mm-hmm. um, and when they come back and do repeat cleansers with us, mm-hmm. it's, it's confirmation that we're on the right track with our products. Well, and, for, and it's really mm, pleasing. For, for any business that has people coming back, I mean, what, what more do you want? I mean, mm. lovely to hear people say, you're doing a great job, love your juice, but just keep coming back. You know, yeah. it's like my listeners, you know, as long as they keep coming back. And I don't know whether they do or not, but I can only <laughs> assume they do. What if this cold pressed juice thing is a trend? That might die out, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I think one because of the, the things- growth you're seeing is significant, and that's got to plateau at some point. And if I'm sure, if we look at the industry which is new, it's also probably experiencing equivalent growth. So you're right now riding the industry, right? 
Oh, in, in Australia, yes. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that gives us comfort is it's been going in the States in New York for 15 years. Has it? The trend mm. has Jeez, it. we're a bit behind that. We are. We the, are. The, the, the this trend. is why New York opened our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and any business needs to continue to evolve and innovate. And, yep. and we believe we're at the forefront in terms of product development. So mm-hmm. we're very comfortable there. But the things that gives us the most reassurance is that geographically we're touching a very small market. Mm -hmm. Um, So Melbourne Metro, and it's sort of inner city Melbourne Metro. So we're looking at ways to get our our reach further. And we've we've started going further afield in Victoria, but there is opportunity beyond that boundary currently. They're popping up everywhere. There's one, Mm. there's there's another one of your competitors is downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Crucifix, crucifix, whatever that sign is. Um, You, is there some anxiety around the fact that whilst you might have nailed Paran and surrounding areas, there's someone doing that in Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, regional Australia, and you might have, are you missing that boat? I, I feel that we weren't ready to, to go further afield than what we've done so far, but we feel very confident that our products are unique. And so whilst there's, there, there's others, juice bars and juice companies opening up, not many of them use 100% organic produce and superfoods and nutritional additives. Like mm-hmm. herbal and, and extracts. Like herbal extracts. And selling... Oh, bar. there's other bits and bobs in there, is there? Yeah, okay. really super boosted. Yeah, yeah, mm. right. I thought so. Because the look, not look all juices look are created oh, no, no, equal, no, no. I keep telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. served in glass bottles. So yeah, right. um, mm. it's not many others do that. And so that's quite unique. But we, we okay, feel so confident that, in our product quality. I, I get all that. And, and, and talking to you guys, and obviously listeners hearing this are going to start going, oh, okay, so Green Street is different to the rest. To the great unwashed, right, everyone else out there, they're driving past these shops and up until half an hour ago, I was one of them. I'm finding it hard to see the difference, Mm. you know. So how do you differentiate yourselves? Besides all that stuff, you could go around. I always say, um, you know, marketing's marketing's what you do when you can't go and see someone. So in an ideal world, you go out and meet everyone in the street and go, let me tell you our story. You can't do that. So how do you stick your head above the trench? Mm. It, it's we've benefited primarily from word of mouth. We do, and I know when you, you want to talk about marketing, and, mm. and Instagram's a part of that for us. But we, a lot of our customers have been referred by someone, and so who has done a cleanse and recommended us or, or talked about the benefits. And people do talk, and we've been lucky enough to have some influential people wander into our shop, either recommended or, or just off the cuff, and, yeah, right. and buy some products and talk about them. And Oh, nice. And, mm. and uh, example? Been, Who? It's been... So, uh, so Megan Gale. Oh, hello. So regular customer. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a Supermodel of, uh, listeners. Yeah, Elise Knowles, Dan McPherson, oh, Ashley now, Hart. Now, but, now mm. I'm showing my age. <laughs> who, who are you talking? Actors, sports actors, people? Mo- actors, models, yeah, right. um, sports people. So they're Valance from Neighbours. So they, they've told, we've had people come into our store and say, I've never heard of your juices. I know nothing about them. But if it's good enough for Megan Gale, I want to give it a go. And even... Um, even what she tweeted or Instagram? Instagram. Did a post. Mm. A post. Oh, yeah. Instagram post. A few and, Instagram posts. And then more recently, even uh, Triple M's own Mick mm. Malloy and Luke Darcy did a, a couple cleanse. of ugly fellas. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we had people ring in and say, I'm, I'm in the Mick Malloy category. I feel I'm a bit overweight. I'd like to lose a few kilos. Uh, I don't know what he did, but, but I want to buy what he did. And wow. So just, we've been great. lucky in that regard. Great way to point out. Uh, point Let's talk marketing. Uh, what a great story so far. I'm loving this. We've gone well over time, but I don't mind about that at all. Okay. Have to do it in two volumes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Obvious. Uh, I was going to say where the name come from, but you've told me that. And talk about product. It, absolutely beautiful, beautiful packaging. And, you know, you've gone to a lot of trouble. I noticed going into your store, there's just all these little one percenters. You know, you get all the stuff, you get all the foundational stuff right, yep. but then you go that extra mile. So beautiful frosted glass bottle which I'm sure is a real point of difference. No one else will have, I won't see this bottle anywhere else in the world, correct? No, that's correct. It's and like they, holding they make a little beautiful grenade. Vases. A little beautiful vase. <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't want to throw it out. No. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that would be a, quite a job in itself, choosing the right bottle. Absolutely. Yeah. It took probably the long one of the longest elements of really? our branding, sourcing and finding the yeah, right, right packaging. We knew it had to be glass because of our philosophy around yep. health and environment, mm-hmm. but its look and feel 
again, we wanted to differentiate ourselves and this is a very different, you know, mm-hmm. look and it immediately puts it in a different category. Yeah, it does. It does. So, yeah. Expensive category. Yeah. The oh, premium we, category. Pre- premium. I, <laughs> Sorry, I, had my, um, I had my father hat on there. <laughs> in saying that though, for a glass bottle and 100% organic product, its price is comparable to a. Com- a it's pretty good. It's about yeah. nine, ten, eleven bucks for a bottle. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's eight, right. Eight fifty to ten fifty. Yeah. Tell, tell me about again. You you could have named these juices after what's in them. You know the orange and beetroot juice, whatever it is. But you've mm. gone with uh, what have I got? Empire State, Easy Going Green, the Bronx. Yes. Yeah, so um, each of the and this is the infusion of our story and the passion through mm-hmm. the business uh, journey. So each of the elixirs, we don't call them juices, oh, we call elixirs. them elixirs. Mm. Each of the elixirs. Very Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic, <laughs> definitely. They have references to places in time in New York that are quite special to us. So our signature green juice is called the Green Street Classic. We have another green juice in the range called 95 Green. We lived on 95 oh, Green Street. Bless. That was our address. Um, mm. That was our address. So, Why wouldn't um, you put the story on each of the bottles? There's not enough space. Like, Come on. <laughs> we, <laughs> that would be great. I'd yeah, love to hear that. Yeah, we probably You've got all this white it. space around the logo. <laughs> <laughs> no, they need We're to. very <laughs> minimal, you know. <laughs> we do like the minimal clean story. look. Story. You've got yeah. such great stories. We'll put you know. that in our book, Tim. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, after you've read mine, you can figure out how to do that. Yes, I'm very um, excited about that, the boomerang effect. Thank you very mm. much. Have you read it yet, Nat? I gave I, it to you about half an hour ago. I'm very ex- <laughs> I, I have read of it and I was very keen to read it. And Beautiful. Here it is. I'm very excited. Talk to me about branding because I reckon a lot of small business owners get branding wrong. They don't attach enough importance to a beautiful looking brand. They think it's a bit superficial and we'll just get a logo and get on with it. Mm, yeah, so that's important. exactly right. And and because in a startup, you're financially restricted. And so where do we spend our money? And it's not something that a lot of businesses have the foresight to, to put effort into that area. And so it is neglected. I agree hundred percent. So how do you, what did you do? You go and find an expensive design agency. Did you use, um, design crowd, a sponsor of this show? What did you, uh... we didn't use design crowd. Oh, uh, we didn't, cause we didn't know about them, but we did go and find one. And we, same with the architect on the store, we went and said, this is what this is the essence of our story and this is what we want to create from a brand perspective, from a store perspective, and went through the process of looking at concepts. And they both nailed it. So we did use a branding agency out front. Who How did you choose ones. them out of interest? Because I think that's in, in itself is important. Did you find work that you loved and then found out who did it? Or We had people recommend um, people they've used before uh, to us. And so we sort of checked out a couple, um, checked out their work yeah, nice. and, and went and met with them. And, and it was clear after you know, a, a pretty brief discussion that they understood where we were coming from. Mm-hmm. They had an affinity with our story and we liked what they produced at the initial stage. So yep. that was the process. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And same goes with the store fit out architect or whatever. What yes. Who does that? Yeah, it's amazing. So the person that we worked with for our store, his name is Travis Walton. and Waltz? Wal- Walton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Trav. Yeah. Um, and this is the other thing about the Green Street journey. We have such a strong community and it's all very locally focused as well. So Travis Walton is, is an incredible architect, very respected both within Australia and mm-hmm. globally. His office is across the road from our store. Beautiful. He's in the store every other day and he drinks the product and, you know, his team drink it. And he was actually recommended again to us. How, how do you... He's, he's high integrity because, which we love, he's had people come to him and either, I don't know whether it's before or after we won the, the international award, but mm-hmm. said, I want to rep, I want to copy Green Street. Uh, yeah, 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 I want yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah, I want that one. <laughs> yeah. And he said, no, he said, I'm not doing that. And that's why good we on use him again for, for future projects. Mm. Yeah. Good on him. You talk about community. Let's just finish there because community is important. You are building a community. Mm-hmm. You've got some uh, opinion leaders in your community who are sharing what you do. And I'm guessing that is, is wonderful marketing. Mm. How do you, how do you nurture that community? It's, it's, a, it's like you said, it's, it's a really important pivotal 
pivotal pivotal part of our journey. We spend a lot of time connecting to our customers. So we're, you know, either in store, calling customers, seeking feedback. Wow. Yeah. It's really important to us. Tell me about that. I love that. So do, do you, you uh, well, how, how do you get their numbers? And like, it's a bit stalking. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's we Nat here from you. Green Street Juice. <laughs> and I understand you bought a Bronx the other day. Is that the call? Well, this is the wonderful thing with people who are cleansing. We keep, keep um, in touch with them throughout their cleanse <laughs> Making journey. sure they're okay. <laughs> are you still yeah. alive? That's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't move a lift. No? Yeah. Do you need some encouragement to get through day one or on juice only? Yeah. <laughs> um, on so, you know, a lot of the time I will sit in the customer service chair and it's by design so that I can call a cleanse customer and say, you know, how are you feeling? It's day three of a seven day cleanse. The other thing that's unique about us is we will craft and tailor menus to suit people's lifestyles. Wow. So I can check in with them partway through their cleanse and say, how are you feeling? Oh, this isn't agreeing with you. Okay, let's switch that out. You're running out of energy at three o'clock. Let's give you, you know, a more energy boosting elixir at that time. Uh. And it is a great point of difference. It's a very personal service orientated How, It's an area, Tim, that Nat spends, uh, I reckon, 80% of her time in this area. And she has done an amazing job building the local community. And it's, it is, we do tailor the cleansers for, you know, customers have food allergies or sensitivities. They can't have, can't have nuts or can't have apple and so we do tailor them and we brought out a fructose friendly, fructose free range specifically for that customer group because there's a lot of them. But it's a big part of Nat's role and she does well, And, an and what I'm job. guessing therefore is when it comes time to create a marketing message as in maybe a, whether it be a social media post, an email, a page on your website, writing that copy will become so easy because mm. you so intimately understand your people. Yeah. And I think it comes back to, again, being genuine and passionate about what you do, because I don't see it as work. And, um, Mm. you know, integrating myself with the yoga community in Melbourne, with other makers of beautiful organic products, with people who are enthusiastic about their health and wellness, that's become my circle of friends. Unreal. That's our community. I don't it's think beautiful. we're going to see you in a, in a law court anytime soon, Nat. <laughs> Steve, I don't think you'll be wandering up and down Collins Street in a pinstripe suit anytime soon. No, I enjoy going to work in jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I love the story. Thank you so much mm. for sharing it. If people want to glow like I am, I don't want to talk too much about my newfound look, but um, <laughs> if they do uh, and they're in the Paran area, go to Malvern Road in Paran, opposite Paran Market, or more likely they're somewhere else in the world. What can they do? Go to... Jump on the website, so greenstreetjuice.com. There's a lot of information there. But if they wanted to call the store or there's a number on the website, they can call to talk to a a customer service specialist about their cleanse needs. Very happy to help. Matt and Steve, thanks for helping save the world. (laughs) Thank you so much. much. (laughs) Well, there you go, team. That was Nat and Steve Warner of Green Street Juice Company. I love that chat. You? Hope you did. I've got my top three attention grabbers thanks to Web Central's simple website solutions and Design Crowd's fully guaranteed design solutions. Love a good solution. Attention grabber number one put effort into your product design. What I didn't say during that chat was that Nat and Steve had kindly given me a one day detox box containing eight bottles of juice. The box design and bottles looked absolutely beautiful, so much so that I just don't want to throw them away. I've actually, just between you and I, I have, I've washed the bottles, I've put them back in the box, and I don't know what to do with them. I can't bring myself to putting them in the bin. So it kind of, I know, I know, weird. What if you created marketing that people didn't want to throw away, right? What if you created marketing that people wanted to share? Hey, there's a challenge. Attention grabber number two, create tailored programs for different prospect groups within your business. Nat and Steve have got the Healthy Man Pack, the Cleanse Pack, and they've got lots of other packs. And it makes it easy for us to buy from them. And it means Green Street get to sell multiple bottles of juice and not just one. Hey, I love Steve's answer at the top of that interview about how he makes money. That, that's how he does it, by selling multiples. Attention grabber number three, the importance of proof of concept. Now, I'm in two minds about this because as Henry Ford said, If he'd asked people what they really wanted, 
they'd have said a faster horse. (laughs) I love that quote. However, the fact that Nat and Steve acted on the overwhelmingly positive response they got from selling at Wonderlust was clearly a smart business decision and good on them for following that up. And now look what they've got, a beautiful, beautiful business that's turning over some good coin. Not making a lot of dough yet, but that's just around the corner. Hey, what grabbed your attention? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 314 and let me know. So I came across this wonderful quote the other day, products or services that are remarkable get talked about. (laughs) Seems pretty simple, right? When I hear about the need for products or services to be remarkable though, I immediately think, yeah, but that requires big budgets, steep pockets, and possibly lots of time. You know, the iPhone is remarkable, but how much did that cost to make? Millions, I don't know, billions. Service at a three-star Michelin hat restaurant is, I'm sure, remarkable. I wouldn't know. I haven't been to one yet. But how long did that take to put in place? But, you know, when I dig a little bit deeper around this quote, it becomes clear that creating a remarkable product or service that gets talked about, it doesn't need to be difficult or expensive. And my wish for all you guys is that you do create something that is remarkable and that does get talked about. What about past guest and electrician, Josh Nichols from Platinum Electricians? His simple 21 steps to an amazing customer experience is remarkable. It cost him nothing but some time to put it together. Or what about Nat from Green Street Juice Company? Her willingness to call customers and check on their well-being. That's remarkable. It'll get talked about. Costs nothing. Or Carl Schwantz from Xenox Diamonds who continually asks, How can he give a client something they didn't think they could ask for? Now, all three of those people are past guests. I'll put links into the show notes to those interviews so you can be reminded that it doesn't need to be expensive to create remarkable products or services. Being remarkable relies more on your mindset than it does on the size of your bank account. So what are you going to do today, team, to get your product or service talked about? Hi, I'm Rowdy McLean from Play Bigger Game. For years, I've been listening to Tim Reed's podcast, Small Business, Big Marketing, and I'm a massive fan. I've been on the show, and uh, recently I got hold of Tim's book, The Boomerang Effect, and it's inspired me to play a bigger game, to kick off my own podcast, the Play Bigger Game podcast, so tips, tricks, ideas, and interviews on how people can play a bigger game. It's amazing where inspiration can come from and I think the podcast and the book that Tim's put together are simple, significant and will make you successful. Awesome stuff, Timbo. Hey, thanks, Rouds. Geez, you're a good bloke. Very kind words and I'm wrapped that my book, The Boomerang Effect, has inspired you to create your own show, your own podcast. Mate, it is going to be an absolute sensation. I wish you all the luck with it. I've heard the pilot. And it is needed, buddy. It is a show that everyone must listen to if they run a business. It's called Play a Bigger Game. Hey, if you want to grab a signed and personalized copy of The Boomerang Effect, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Righto, I have got a question from listener and forum member, Christian. It's about video marketing. Christian says, I am in the process of planning to produce. Hmm, Christian, I'd just be in the process of producing. (laughs) Forget the planning. Get going! (laughs) Bit harsh, aren't I? I'm in the process of planning to produce a few videos from a website and customers. Well, that's a good idea. That is an excellent idea. And I'm just wondering if anyone has any tips on software that they have used in the past for editing. Oh, Christian, why do you want to be on the tools, mate? Long term, I am planning on creating a huge range of short instructional videos. I teach maths as a tutor. Jeez, maths. That was me snoring. I went immediately to sleep the minute I saw maths. So I would like to have the freedom of editing myself without having to pay someone for every five-minute video. I don't mind a steep learning curve if the value is there. Any thoughts are much appreciated. Well, team, I deferred this question to past guest and friend of this show, Darren Finkelstein, from St Kilda Boat Sales, who is a prolific video creator. He punches out one a week. He, as a result of these videos, is the Beach and Bay weather reporter 
on a radio station in Melbourne and videos has changed the way Daz does business. Here's what he's got to say for Christian. G'day there, Christian. Darren Finkelstein's my name. I'm the boat guy. And Timbo Reid's asked me to respond back to your question in relation to video editing and uh, what software I'm using. Well, listen, mate, to be really honest with you, I hate video editing, so I'm just sticking with the basic iMovie software. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, uh, in most cases, I try and just do a single take. And if I don't like it, I'll just redo it. Uh, nonetheless, I also use a product called BuzzyVid. So head to a website called busivid.com. BuzzyVid is some terrific software that I found along my uh, journey. It tops and tails my videos that I'm creating, and it also puts a watermark on them. So basically, once you've created your video, you can go and make some changes in iTunes, uh, in um, iMovie if you wanted to for video editing. But once you've made your take and you're happy with it, then uh, I upload my uh, video to buzzyvid.com, a cloud-based system that puts my branding on the opening uh, scene of the video and the closing scene, of course, with credits and website and all that important stuff, and that watermark that I talked about, and then it uploads it to my YouTube account. And from YouTube, I just bring it in as an embedded file into my website. Anyway, uh, hopefully I've answered your question for you. It's over and out from the boat guy. Cheers. Thanks, Dazzle Leary. You are a good fellow. I concur with everything you said. Other forum members also provided some great answers to Christian's conundrum, including a suggestion to use Camtasia or ScreenFlow. Simple pieces of software. I think they're 99 bucks each that record what's going on on your screen, what you're saying, turn it into videos. Don't even have to look down the barrel of a camera. Got to love that. Christian, thanks, mate, for your question. I look forward to you posting your first video inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum pretty soon for our other members to to lovingly critique. And I mean lovingly. Hey, everyone else, if you've got a marketing conundrum, then include it in a listener review on the Apple iTunes store. Well, that'd be a big show, I'd say. I told you at the top, big show today. Hope you agree. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead. Next week, you and I, we get together with this fellow Soren. He has a, uh, a very cool workspace that I've been working out of recently called Work Club. And we chat about the rising interest in these co-working spaces, what makes a great working space, and a uh, wonderful, wonderful story. Again, love great stories. Hey, be sure to use Design Crowd to get pretty much anything designed. A typical project receives 60 to 100 plus designs from designers around the world. And you can grab a VIP listener discount over at designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. And I would suggest going ahead and using Web Central to avoid your website being a billboard in the desert. They've got some great deals over at webcentral.com.au. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, soon to be found on Virgin Australia. I love that. Hey, may your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.